Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. How you guys doing? This is Matt from NST. I uh, want to thank you guys for attending uh, what is slowly becoming late lunch with Matt. Um, glad you guys were able to attend here on a Friday. And yes, it is Friday. Everybody should be happy about that. Um, the funny thing is I've the, the, the going joke around at least my house is that uh, you know, while everybody's working from home is that happy hours sometimes start a little earlier. So, um, so uh, today we are talking about VoIP and we have some great guests uh, with us today. Dan Nicklin and Will Crawford from Vodacall are here with us today. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, have them talk about their solution, uh, a little bit about their solution. So it is VoIP, so it is uh, cloud-based. Um, it is not on-prem. Um, the really good thing about it is that um, it, in times like these, allow you to basically have your phone system basically working from home. Uh, they've been great with a, a couple of customers of ours. Um, so one comp company who I think is attending, um, the Maypro Group, they uh, are basically uh, have an on-prem system through um, through Vodacorp. And when I say on-prem, it is cloud-based, but they are using you know phones at their desk. But the good thing about it, since it is cloud-based and that everybody is working remotely, they're all you know at home. You know, it's like they are sitting at their desk with their phones. Um, we had another company that uh, needed help. They needed, um, they were using an on-prem system since they're all now working from home. They are again now on Vodacall and able to work from the mobile app um, that is now installed on their cell phones. So now they are making and receiving phone calls uh, from their cell phone using the Vodacall app, which allows them to um, basically work as if they're in the office. Uh, so, with that being said, um, anything you guys want to add? No, I mean, uh, well, good afternoon, everybody, uh, and uh, Matt, thanks for having us. This is Dan from Vodacall, and uh, Will is on here as well. I am uh, director of our sales engineering team, and Will is uh, one of the directors of, uh, of sales. So, uh, Will, you want to say hello? Yes, hello, everybody. All right. And um, no, I mean, a great introduction. Um, you know, we can we can kind of dive straight in here. Um, you know, I, we do do a lot of uh, presentations. And I think what we'll try to do today is just give you a, a high level view. Um, if there is anybody uh, when this is finished that wants to uh, wants to get a full blown, you know, demo from us or demonstration from us, um, you know, you can just uh, let Matt know and we'll reach out to you. Um, you know, I think that that'll, uh, this will obviously make its way up to uh, the YouTube channel, and I think that that's great. You can watch it again. Um, but I think it's really important in our current climate that we have uh, some conversations just about uh, some of the things like like Matt mentioned. Uh, you know, one of the one of the clients that just came over recently. Um, you know, we weren't. Uh, they basically just needed to work. They needed to work remotely. They needed to do it very quickly. Um, you know, and I think from the time that we touched uh, paperwork to the time that they were set up was within hours. Um, you know, Vodacall is a very unique in the in the industry and in that we are a fully managed solution. Um, you know, so we are very much like uh, NST is on the uh, on the data side. So I think it's, you know, important to kind of differentiate us in that way. Um, we are a, a boutique voice over IP firm that's very focused on customer experience. Um, Will, what, anything that you want to add to that that sort of piece there? Uh, no, I mean I think you you you, um, you said it well. I mean I think that that means different things to different people. Why we we in it, we work well with, uh, with companies like NST is because they are very hands on. Obviously, setting up a call like this today to inform you guys on what's available, what we're doing for clients, what other people in your situations are doing. Um, we do just that on the telco side. So we're very hands-on, little things like moves, ads, changes, reconfiguration, setting up a mobile client, you know, reacting to uh, certain situations, especially like what we have going on today. Um, we're very proactive. We reach out to our clients. We're, we're there uh, when, when you need us to be, which is a, a, obviously a big differentiator. We're not a big company. Um, so I think that's sort of the takeaway uh, we want you to get today. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. 
And let me just add to the fact that, uh, you know, it, when we talk about getting set up, I mean, they literally set up one of our customers with about 10 users in literally a day, right? So in a day, they were working. Um, so um, that's the really good thing about this. Is it can be really quick. Um, so for those of anybody that are on the, the webinar today that are still using on-prem, um, that are struggling with, you know, how do I make and receive phone calls? How do I transfer? Do I not want my my team to use their personal cell phones to call my customers. Those are the things that, uh, you know, that we want to stress that these, this solution can help you with. Um, in addition to this, we want to keep this interactive, right? So uh, the guys and I are going to have fun. It is Friday. Um, feel free. I'm going to leave the question <laughs> box open, right? So if you guys have any questions while uh, Dan is going through his, uh, his presentation, you know, feel free and I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, jump up and down and yell and scream and tell Dan to stop so we can get some questions answered. Uh, all right, Dan. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's all right. I was going to say I appreciate that because uh, Will, will, will will tell most people that I ramble on for a while. Uh, you know, our standard, uh, I think one of the things when we start to talk about voice over IP and why people move to voice over IP, a lot of the things that have, we've thrown out there already are some of those major reasons. You know, it's the mobility, it's the flexibility of the whole solution. It is the DR and, and business continuity side of things. You know, we've been talking DR with folks for a long time now. Uh, you know, 15 years ago, you talked DR with banks because that was important. Now it's really changed. Everybody kind of needs to have a DR plan. I think Superstorm Sandy really enforced that for a lot of folks. Um, and now we're, we're really starting to talk about business continuity. But I think when we were talking about business continuity, I don't know, two months ago, I think the idea was, okay, business continuity, maybe we'll have another Superstorm Sandy, and maybe we'll be, you know, forced to not go into work for a few days here. Um, and now we're in this current environment. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, I think that's really where you start to realize what the cloud is all about. That's where you realize, okay, those moves that we made to move our data into the cloud and move our solutions into the cloud across the board really start to pay off. Um, and for all those folks that, you know, are still using on-premise, you know, it really does come to light now uh, because it's be more than just forwarding, right? You know, it's more than just taking one phone number and forwarding out to somewhere. But let's get into some of that. Let's, uh, yeah, let's let me, jump in, Matt, if yeah, you don't mind me, uh, uh, taking over your screen here. Yep, I'm just coming over to you. Coming over, Dan. Heads up. Okay. I just have to remember to pick which screen I'm showing here. Um, and I think that's the one I want. Um, no, I want... All right, forgive me here, folks. Give me one sec. That's the one. There we go. Okay, so you guys should be able to see uh, my screen now. And uh, I have right over here up on the, uh, the left-hand side, I have my, uh, my desktop client. Um, you know, I have been, I mean, just so you guys know here, I mean, we've been working from home for, I think we, we went home about a week before most other folks started to go home. Um, you know, uh, so we've been like, this is the end of week three for us, uh, working remotely. Um, I did typically usually work on, uh, on Fridays from home anyway, uh, just because of some traffic in the afternoons gets a little tough, especially in the summer. Uh, I'm on a commuter rail, a commuter path. Uh, so, you know, it's been one of those things that I've been doing for a long time. Um, you know, and there's multiple ways to work from home. And I think that, or, or to work remotely, not even from home all the time. Um, but, you know, one of the keys to that is obviously having a, a desktop client in this particular case, um, you know, is what is what you're looking at here. And if I wanted to have a, you know, I've got a full functioning phone here, as well as some other things that I'll show you that are pretty interesting. Um, you know, one of the other things that you have the ability to do is have a mobile client. And uh, what you're looking at here is 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 a mobile client. Um, you'll notice that the conversations are the same as you go across them. And just so you guys know, um, that is actually my cell phone. So, I mean, if I wanted to come down into here and, uh, you know, go to my dial pad and make a phone call to somebody right now, I could easily just do that. Um, you know, and the beauty of that is, is that when those calls go out, those calls are going out from my desk number. When somebody calls me back, they're calling back into the, into the client. And I can distinguish between, you know, desk number, uh, non-desk number. I can, custom clients are getting my work voicemail. Um, and that voicemail is being translated in, into, uh, into an email. It even gets uh, translated into some text. So, I mean, if we came in here and I just close the app for a minute uh, and come down here into my text messages. Um, so let's just jump through here. Here's one from voicemail. Uh, and you can see here that uh, Andrew Jellison called me a little while ago. And it's uh, Danny, Andrew, give me a buzz. Bye. Um, you know, and then you've got some longer ones here. Here's one from uh, Jesse in our organization. 
and you can see that as well. So, I mean, got a lot of flexibility and a lot of different uh, ways to, to do some of this stuff. Um, you know, one sec, I'll pull back up the mobile app. Okay, uh, we can also uh, transfer calls around between the desktop app and the mobile app um, as well. Now, if I wanted to sit here and uh, if I come into here, here's a conversation that I've been having with John. Uh, and you can see here that uh, I wanted to touch base with him this morning to talk through a demo I'm giving today. And you guys are on that. Uh, and I just, uh, I had a quick conversation with him about that. And I also asked that he uh, he'd be available and, uh, you know, to, uh, to oh, sorry. Probably need to put an O on the end of that. A um, little typo there. Um, but John will get back to us in just a sec. You can see him texting. Now, if I were to pull up, um, if I were to pull up my mobile client, you'll see that I just got notified on that as well. And there's John. He's he's texting me here. So um, you know, I'm I'm on the road quite a bit, and uh, you know, I've I've started a conversation working from a, a hotel room on my on my desktop app here, and then jumped into a taxi cab to head out to an appointment and finish the conversation right on my mobile device. So you can see that, that gives us a lot of flexibility. Now for some folks, and I, you know, as we start to take a look at, uh, at this, and Dan, at the let current me, environment that we're Dan, in. Dan, let me interrupt. Yeah, go ahead. The really good thing about this too is I like the status of the users too, right? That's a, that's a key thing, right? So like we're all here in a mm -hmm. meeting, right? The last thing we want to do is now get bombarded with, uh, you know, the status to say, Hey, you know, um, you know, are you free? Or are you not free? Right. And I think that's a really good feature. Yeah. If you can see there right on my, um, I didn't, I didn't tell it I was in a meeting. Um, <clears throat> it's tying into my office 365 and it's letting me know it's, uh, it's just pulling out that I have a meeting and you know, when this meeting is over, it'll bring me back to available or if somebody's on a phone call, um, I'll see that as well. Um, you know, you get a lot of, uh, different kinds of, of flexibility there. Um, you know, when we talk about uh, working remotely, working from home, business continuity and those kind of things, you know, it really comes down to environments. Um, and I think a lot of companies are starting to realize, especially with, you know, again, where we're at right now, looks like this may go on for at least another month, um, at least uh, here in Massachusetts where I am um, and uh, in New York as well, uh, and probably even a little bit longer than that, you start to realize, okay, well, some folks don't want to work from a desktop app, or maybe they don't want to work from a, uh, you know, from a mobile app. Um, <clears throat> you can actually have a phone as well uh, and get yourself set up with a hard phone. Now, Will, at your home office, you have a hard phone, correct? I do, yep. Yep. Um, and then, uh, Matt, I think if we take a look at you, you actually talk to us on a headset, right? So. Yep, I talked to you. Big earbuds, big Mickey Mouse ears. I, big, big giant Mickey Mouse ears. Yeah, I stole uh, my stole my son's gaming headset, so that's what I'm using. <laughs> and uh, because you know, I've been doing some of these things and doing some videos. I think if I were to turn my video on right now and wave to all you guys, uh, and I'll do that quickly here for you. Um, let and Dan, let me just jump in here real quick. So. Guys, the, the, the one takeaway that I want you guys to have is that you know, I've seen, and I'm, I'm from the sales side, so I'm, I'm, I'm very much not technical, uh, and I've seen so many variations of you know, mobile applications and soft phone clients over the years, as I'm sure you all have too. This isn't something new that you guys are seeing for the first time. I do want you to see the takeaway, um, at least from my perspective, is how easy this is to use. So when we started incorporating this, on our platform and why we liked uh, this so much is that, you know, someone like myself, someone who is not tech savvy can just use it and use it well with the, you know, the, the presence and the, uh, the tools that it does have. So people are using it. I mean, it, it's a nice to have, but people actually are using this, um, you know, b before three weeks ago when people were forced to use it, people were using it on a daily basis. So, so for our company to go virtual or to go mobile, it, it was literally like flicking a switch. Um, so for others that are that we're now bringing on board on the fly, um, you know, same day even, uh, they're able to use this and use it effectively, which is you know, which is which is far from what we saw a few years ago when you loaded a mobile client or a um, uh, a soft phone application. You know, it looked like it should work well and it looked pretty, but that wasn't always the case. And that's what I love about this so much is that it just works and it works well. So sorry, Dan, I didn't mean to cut you off. 
No, that's okay. I mean, that's that's really what this is all about. I mean, I think it's important to know that, uh, you know, as as folks start to get uh, to thinking about this and, you know, we've 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 had it forced on us now, what it really does introduce is, you know, the idea of what what's your internal customer experience like while working with your external customers. I mean, because, you know, a lot of the time when you do talk about and that's what Will's just referencing, just how simple it is to set up when you do talk about having a DR plan or a business continuity plan. You know, a lot of times what it's about is, okay, how do we reach our clients? Um, but, you know, you've also, now that now that we're in a middle of a month-long stretch of, of having to work in that type of environment, it really does become, okay, what's the experience like for the employees? So, you know, the idea that you can pivot and move quickly uh, and, and adjust the internal customer experience so that, so that your internal folks are, not only are they working, but they're working efficiently, they're working, it, it makes sense uh, the way that they're working and they're able to, you know, pick up their calls, get their messages, um, <clears throat> excuse me, transfer calls, move them around. You know, we had a, uh, we had a law firm last week, uh, it was two weeks ago now actually, that reached out to us and you know they had, uh, they had had a proposal for a while and just had been on the fence about it and they called us on a Monday morning and said, listen, we're in trouble. Um, you know, we, what can you guys do to help? Um, and so one of the things that we did was we, we instantly got them some numbers, worked with them, got an auto attendant set up, um, you know, got them a, a bunch of uh, DIDs that they could forward their existing system to. Um, we were familiar with their on-premise system, so we did help them out and get, get, that, um, get that moving forward for them. Um, and they are still uh, actually on that and have actually made the decision to port their phone numbers. Um, the porting process, if none of you guys are familiar with it, is just the process of moving from one carrier to another. Um, your numbers are always yours, so it's a very simple process. Uh, you know, you just, there's basically some paperwork that you fill out and then those numbers move over. But this client is actually making the change to completely uh, move to voice over IP now because they, they see exactly what this is all about. Um, and it made sense for them to be doing that at this time. But, uh, you know, when we talk about internal CX, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the person who answers the phone for them, you know, has been doing it for about 40 years. Uh, I really wasn't very comfortable with the idea of using a, a mobile client. Um, so we actually got a desktop phone out to them and they're actually working on that while uh, the attorneys, a lot of them are working from from the application. Some of them are using the desktop app because they're more comfortable in that environment. And then we have uh, some phones going out to some other folks as well so that they can get set up on a more permanent basis. So really it's gotta be about not just how do we contact our customers, but how do we keep our people moving and how do we keep them you know, happy in this type of environment as well. And that internal CX is really important. Um, and and, and know, staying, uh, there, staying, there, yeah. staying there for a second, can you talk a little bit about, because I'm just uh, looking at some questions that are coming in, uh, can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about the cloud architect architecture, specifically re redundancy when you're talking about that? Uh, sure. Um, you know, there is uh, our, our backend platform is a Broadsoft platform. You know, Broadsoft was purchased by Cisco a few years ago, uh, a leader in voice over IP and, and Cisco looking to make their make a stamp on the on voice over IP market uh, more than just their old Cisco phone system, their PBX, you know, saying, OK, let's move to the cloud. They purchased Broadsoft. Broadsofts are traditionally they are a class five carrier grade switch. And I'm going to say some stuff here. I'm a, I'm assuming that this is a technical uh, question here, but I'll, I'll try to do both. Um, it's a class five carrier grade switch. So most telecom companies, that's, uh, that's kind of the level of switch that they use. They are sold in pairs and are fully redundant. Um, so we have uh, one in Dallas and one in Chicago, and those basically are, are 24 seven, 365. You could start a phone call on one, end it on the other, and you may not, may not know any difference. It is fully redundant architecture across the board. Um, so technically, uh, that's, I mean, it's it, always on. I mean, it's, uh, you know, that, that's, that's what we like to say there. Will, you want to throw anything in there on that? Um, I mean, yeah, it, that's a technical answer. I mean, the bottom line is that we're in data centers that are the same data centers as Bank of America. All the major carriers are in those um, same data centers. Um, Dan is very superstitious and doesn't like to say we've ever been down. So our platform has never been down. We've had obviously service related issues that we give clarification on and we send emails and proactive responses to why certain things might be happening, but our platform itself um, you know, does not go down. If it, if it did, we'd have, we'd have much bigger problems. So I hope that doesn't get you know, too technical, but um, that's, that's, that's the, the best version I can give you. 
Yeah. All right. That's great. And I, I appreciate that. Um, I mean, and we are 24 seven, 365 live answer support. Um, uh, you know, it is, uh, it is, uh, our company is very focused on support, and I think that's important to get out there. Um, you know, we are we are a CX-based organization. Uh, it's customer first. The customer experience is the only metric, is our motto. Um, you know, if I went through the slide deck that's behind here, that's the kind of thing that you'd see. So uh, for any of you guys who do want to learn a little bit more, you just, uh, like again, just reach out and let us know, and we'll be happy to have some conversations, um, you know, about that kind of thing. Um, Matt, you have other questions there? Yeah, what about the integration piece, third parties? Does it integrate with Slack and Teams, and, and how does it, how's the Office 365 integration look? Okay, I mean, so I've got some Office 365 integration right here inside my, my web client. So, I mean, if you were to take a look here, this is, uh, sorry, hang on one second. Let's pull up my... Uh, my mail here, um, you can see here, this is uh, this is actually tied into my mailbox. If I go into my Outlook right now and I click on a contact, it's gonna pull up the soft phone and just pull that out and completely. Um, if I was in a meeting with, with John here um, and I wanted to expose Hub with John, uh, excuse me, so these are all the phone calls that I have with, excuse me, emails that I have going on with John right now. Um, I can also pull up our pull up the uh, OneDrive. So this is uh, anything that is shared between the two of us inside of OneDrive is available to me right here. Um, with as far as Teams goes, you know, Teams as uh, there is some integrations in the pipeline uh, with Teams that are starting to happen uh, to tie in with your phone numbers and and be able to to, to make some phone calls. Um, Microsoft has never been open, uh, incredibly open about, uh, you know, pulling all the, letting people uh, pull in with their stuff, but they are starting to see that because people are starting to use Teams a lot more. Um, we actually do use Teams in our organization as well. Um, but the idea I think is uh, that the integration is is on its way. Um, and I think it's gonna be uh, pretty good when it gets here. I'm um, looking forward to that actually, because we do have a lot of people asking us that question. But right here in the UC1 client, you do have the ability to do this. So if I'm talking to John and we're in a thing, you know, I can immediately pull up any, any files that we're working on, click on them, open them up, we can collaborate together. Uh, we can share screens, um, jump in, you know, and have, uh, I can join my room with him so I can join his room or he can join my room and we can actually, you know, uh, get there inside of the room. Um, at which point we can now introduce some video as well as share screens. Um, you know, so there's a lot of uh, collaboration tools built right into the UC1 suite as well. Um, and that, that can also be done on the mobile phone as well. So the mobile client is a full functioning client. So I could do the same thing if I came over here. Sorry, I always forget that I, I they can't click on that because it's not, uh, I have to touch the actual phone. You're actually just looking in a mirror of the phone itself. Um, you know, so, and then again, I've got access to that uh, at right here as well inside of here. So I can pull up the calendar with John and look at meetings that we have shared and so on and so forth. Um, now integrations with other third parties, uh, we're able to integrate with, uh, you know, with Salesforce, with most of the other major, um, you know, CRMs, there are integrations that you can tie in with that. Uh, I mean, we have clients uh, using all, all sorts of different things um, from Zendesk on down. Uh, we do do a lot of call centers with a lot of folks. That's one of our specialties. So, um, you know, uh, Vineyard Vines is one of our clients, for instance. Um, you know, we've been running their call center for a long time. Dan, what about Any global? Other? Yeah, Dan, what about global organizations? Does it work overseas? Uh, it does. Okay, great. Um, you know, we we have, uh, you know, again, if I went through the slide deck, we talk about a bunch of different customers. The uh, Will, do you want to go over just sort of where we fit and what our sweet spot is, and with regards to uh, client size, so on and so forth, and, and review that? Sure. So, so the the average client size that we work with right now is is forty two users. That's the average across the board. Uh, the reason being is that you're you're obviously big enough where you're starting to use some of the applications. Maybe you have you know a corporate office. Maybe you have some people overseas. Maybe you just have uh, three locations with fifteen a piece across the board. But there's there's something there. There's there's a call center. There's need for mobile applications integration. So you know. I think Dan may have mentioned this, but we don't talk features first just because we can do all the features. They're, they're, we're, we're, it's very rare we come across a feature that we cannot do that someone else can. In fact, we might have a couple that we do that no one else does. Um, so that's, it, it, it's, you're big enough so you're taking advantage of some of those features and functionalities 
um, but you're small enough to need and appreciate the, you know, the customer service and the experience that we can offer that the other big companies cannot. So, you know, like we talked about, does it integrate with this or that? We don't have a list that says we integrate with this and we don't integrate with that. We take every single question, we take every single um, application, CRM, we take a look at it, look at the back end, and we try to make that work for you guys. We've had that come up quite a bit over the years. So we never come out and say no. We're certainly going to look into it and try. All the obvious ones we certainly can do. Um, so I hope that kind of hits home that, you know, company size to us, again, we're not looking in the thousands. We want someone that can appreciate a company like ours who's, you know, we're only about 52 people, that can appreciate that small company feel and attention uh, that, uh, that they need and they put a lot of stock in um, because that's, that's the kind of company we are. So hopefully that, Dan, hopefully that helps you out. It does. And, and, you know, and I think to tie back into, uh, I think the reason I asked Will to jump in there is because he does a better job of that than I do. Um, you know, and then, but one of the things, if I was running through the slide deck, we'd go over some customers, uh, Vineyard Vines, as I mentioned, is, is in the slide deck because we're talking about the idea that, you know, they're in there because of call center. Uh, the American Red Cross is in there because, you know, they're in there because we have some offices of theirs that are three, four or five phones. We have other offices that are 250 phones. Um, you know, we have some other companies like uh, uh, that are that are on our slide decks that that are companies that started with us in the Boston location. And then, you know, and then we did New York and then we did Paris and then we did Ireland. Um, you know, so it really uh, there's there's one client in there that started as a uh, five people and it's uh, a biotech firm and, and now is uh, takes up uh, four floors in a, in a Boston building that they had built for themselves. So, I mean, it really does, you know, folks grow with us um, and they do, uh, you know, they, t they stay with us because of that kind of support. And because, you know, again, we're, we're very, uh, we're very focused on, on making sure the customer experience is what it's supposed to be. We always like to say to folks, you know, we don't really want you to talk about the phones. We just want you to talk on them. So um, anything else, Matt, anybody else have any questions out there? Yeah. Let me ask you a couple more. So I, I know with the, you know, one of the biggest headaches I know that people have always had with on-prem systems is that, you know, as moves or changes typically rack up cost, right? So mm -hmm. can you talk about, you know, how changes are, are made? Uh, is there a cost for them? And then also, you know, a little bit about the, the, the portal, right? So can, can, okay. can a company make their changes themselves and not have to worry about calling support? Yeah, that's, I mean, these the terrific question. I don't know if that came from you directly or somebody out there, but. Uh, uh, you know, great questions from a crowd today. Great questions from a crowd uh, today. Yeah, it, that's, it's one of my favorite questions, actually. Um, because we are a managed service, and we mentioned that a little while ago, um, that, that means different things to different folks. Um, and I think that's what Will followed up with. But really what it comes down to, support is all included. Um, support, maintenance. Uh, hardware replacements, all of that stuff is included in in the bottom line pricing. So when you get a number from us, it it, it is a number that says, okay, this is what your user cost is, and, and so on and so forth. And we hand that to you. It's very transparent pricing. You can take a look at it. It's right in line, industry in line. Um, you know, when you get that from us, it includes all those other things that we were just talking about: the support, 24/7, 365 live support, moves, ads, changes. All that is covered. Now, some folks say to us when, when we start to have that conversation, they say, well, wait a minute. I, what about me? I, I, this is what I do, or I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to make these changes. Okay. Well, training's included as well. So what we always like to say to folks is, is you get to become who you want to become on the phone system. And the beauty of that is, is that you can pivot at any time. So you could start by saying, you know what? I want you to teach me the whole system. I want to make all the changes in the world. And then a situation like this happens, that, you know, like the, the environment that we're in right now. And all of a sudden, you've got to support 50 people to move them to their home offices, get them up on the clients. You could call us up and say, listen, I need some help here. Can you help me get these people set up? We'll just do that stuff for you. Um, you know, we, we take care of anything that you need us to. I mean, we have some schools and things like that, that if they're going to be closing the next day, they actually just send us over an email to support at vodacall.com that just says, can you have this message run from tonight through tomorrow afternoon because of the snowstorm, we're going to be closed. And we'll actually go in, record the message for them, play it, set their schedules and do all that. Now we have other folks who just say, hey, I don't remember how to do that. Can you walk me through it? Um, so you get to become exactly who you want to become, but the beauty of it is, is that all of that is included because it is a managed service. So there are no costs outside of paying for your users monthly. 
Dan, what about the the handsets themselves? You know, there are a couple of questions about, um, you know, I have an on-prem system, you know, can I use my existing handsets? Um, and then talk a little bit about, you know, how the handsets, you know, factor into the pricing would be great as well. Okay. Um, will you want to, I mean, we do standardize on Polycom. I'll let Will answer the, uh, the question about pricing, um, but we do, we standardized on Polycom sets. Now that's not to say that if somebody out there had a whole bunch of phones, you know, that they had just purchased and they hated their service or were having a bad time with their service. It's not used words like hate, but are just not having a good experience. If, you know, there's a, there's a chance that we could probably use those phones too, if they were voice over IP enabled, um, you know, the proprietary handsets. So there are ones that are probably not going to be able to come over. Like if somebody had an old Avaya phone system or a Shortel phone system, um, you know, those are probably not going to migrate over. But again, it's all just about having a conversation and getting an understanding. The reason we standardized on Polycom is because it was, it was just helpful for us. We found that they were the best phone at being a phone. They are an industry standard too. So if somebody makes a decision to, uh, you know, purchase uh, a handset and then they decide for some reason that we're not the right provider for them, um, you know, they can take those handsets to any one of the major players that are out there. Uh, and then, Will, do you just want to go over just the different different options we have for how to, you know, phones and, and how you get those? Yeah, and I think that's, yeah, the, and that's, the, and that's the key question there is that do, do the, does the user now have to go out and the organizations have now have to go out and buy new phones? Right. So, yeah, that's, I mean, obviously this comes up on a traditional um, migration or a traditional install every single time. So whether it be on-premise or coming from another hosted VoIP provider or whatever. So, I mean, it's handled on a case-by-case -case basis. So the traditional phone system users, um, yes, you're going to have to get new phones. So Avaya, um, older Panasonic, Toshiba, to name a few, uh, those are traditional PBX analog or digital devices. So we would have to provide you with new Polycom IP phones. Um, now, again, we can get creative there, give some sort of trade-in, and figure out how to make those work. And even in that environment, we can either sell you the phone, we can rent you the phone, or we can finance you the phone. So there's, there's tons of options when it comes down to that. It's, it's just what are they after, and what do they want to see on paper, and what fits into your budget. Going from a, uh, another hosted VoIP uh, or managed service that already has maybe Polycom, that one's pretty easy. We can repurpose those. We can flash them and load them up with Vodacom firmware, and we're good to go. If you have another uh, VoIP type phone, because um, there are plenty of them out there, uh, we have to have a conversation to find out what you're using, and if you do like them, how can we, re how can we reuse them? But uh, again, we never say no. We'll just take a, a look at them case by case and see what we can do. So I hope that uh, hope that answers the question. Yeah, and to add to that too, because I've seen some of the pricing as well. You know, the, the rental price of the phone is so inexpensive that it really just doesn't even make, in my opinion, it just really doesn't even make sense to 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 purchase the phone. You know, it's just kind of, you know, uh, the the rental fee is just kind of, you know, an, an add on to the service, and it, it again, it just makes it so cost effective and so easy to 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 migrate uh, off of because. Really, there's very, very little upfront cost, um, you know, in setting something like this up, which I think is fabulous, right? And and it, again, it just makes the process and the transition so much easier and so much faster. Yep, I mean, it, yeah, little to no upfront cost plus the warranty and all the all that good stuff rolls up into any one of those options. So yeah, we're starting to see a lot more people just renting them, and when they want phones replaced or need to get them replaced, we upgrade them with the new ones. So. Um, you know, looking out for your best interest in terms of those devices that sit on your desk. So I, uh, I completely agree with you, Matt. Good. One other question too came up is that, um, you know, we've seen with a lot of the other VoIP providers is that, you know, they'll do an update to the system, right? And, and there'll be no communication as to the, when the update is being done, how it's being done, what time it's being done, what's the expected downtime. Can you guys talk about how you guys update your system? Yes. Um, and this is uh this is usually one of those ones where I pull in uh, our, our director of technology so he can review all that. But the system, uh, because there's uh, maintenance is always communicated um, and it's communicated out. You know, if we're doing any kind of maintenance that could have any kind of disruption or any kind of downtime, uh, we're going to go ahead and communicate that to you um, and let you know ahead of time. Um, but because there are a pair, we you know we always run maintenance on one, uh, make sure that everything's okay, and then run maintenance on the other. 
Um, so, so from a downtime perspective or interruption perspective, there, there really isn't any. Um, so it's, it, you know, that's one of the things that we're able to do fairly easily and seamlessly because of the fact that we have a redundant platform and it is a fully redundant platform. I mean, the, the whole architecture is redundant from, uh, from location to location. Okay, so great. I hope that helps. Yeah, perfect. Great. Thanks. Dan, anything else you want to show us uh, as far as the, the system, the slide deck, anything else? No, I mean, I think, you know, one of the questions you did ask, I mean, I, I think, you know, again, if somebody wants to see a, a, a more formal demo, um, we can do that. Um, you know, it, it is good always to just kind of jump in here and I'll kind of show you the, the portal. Um, you know, I'm logged in here. This is this is my user. I've got access to my basic call logs, uh, you know, that give me a good idea of what's happening here. I've got access to, uh, to all of my... Uh, you know, my information, anything that I want to change, any of my forwarding, if I want to create a schedule for myself, because, you know, so calls happen at specific times, um, I have the ability to do that, you know, so that certain features kick in at certain times of the day. Um, you know, again, I've got a lot of control here. And from an admin perspective, you know, you have the ability to come in if you're an administrator and you want to, you want to attend to any of your auto attendance click auto attendant, you know, come in, take a look at this, you know, come into the auto attendant, here's your business hours menu, here's your after hours menu, how do you want things to function and, and work? And again, we can do all this for you, you always have access to this, or we can train you on it at any time. I mean, so it really comes down to, you know, whatever a customer really wants to, uh, wants to become, they can become. But I think that's it. I think if anybody is interested in taking a look at, uh, you know, something a little bit more in depth, I think we can uh, we can facilitate that. Hey, Dan, one more question came in. What about um, mm -hmm. the call bridges? Right. So, you know, does does each user, you know, have the ability to have their own bridge? Um, yeah, I mean, I, we have the ability um, to offer that. Um, you know, there's a couple of different ways that we handle that. It just depends on what the client is really looking for. But the answer is yes. OK, great. All right, great. Um, Dan and Will, I, I want to thank you for, for coming on Late Lunch with Matt. Um, it seems to be a theme nowadays. Uh, appreciate you guys coming on, taking the time. Again, you know, this system has uh, helped out a couple of our accounts, especially in the world we live in now. So, you know, feel free to to reach out to me and I'll, I'll happily get you in touch with, with Will and Dan. Um, again, thank you guys for coming on. Just uh, as we promised, I'm going to maybe show off uh, – my Mickey Mouse earphones, right? So everybody can see them, right? This is my Mickey Mouse earphones with my gaming headset. So everybody can see that. Mm -hmm. uh, Fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Uh, you know, it kind of tunes out everything else in the background, right? So, uh, all right, great. I'll go and, ahead and fire mine up too. Yep. <laughs> yeah, all right, great. Uh, again, Will, thank, thank, thanks again. Uh, again, please feel free to reach out. And everyone, please remember to uh, stay safe out there and everybody have a great weekend. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah. We appreciate uh, who's on that, uh, you know, I can't see your faces, but uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.